Han Shiwei, vice representative of Pinan Clinic, the chief physician in charge of Yelao surgery, shouted at Dr. Mai in outrage that some ambulance driver would perform Yelao surgery. Li Jin Chuan, the chairman of Pinan Hospital, asked in surprise, Did that driver diagnose Ye Lao's heart defect without the help of any equipment? He also suggested that he should abandon the conventional form of surgery. Mai Kuyan, the surgeon in charge of Ye Lao's operation, replied that she didn't pay much attention to what he said until they opened the patient's chest. Heart problems were the reason for the failed operation. Han Shiwei, the chief physician, indignantly claimed that it was just a guess and even the king of the apes would be able to define the disease like this. Claiming that this was nonsense, Han Shui said that if the driver performed the operation and made a mistake, the hospital would face public censure, and if it was successful, their reputation. The chairman interrupted the doctor's speech with a loud enough and pounded his fist on the table in anger. The chairman shouted, What kind of reputation can a clinic have that can't even handle routine surgeries? We've been meeting for so long, and have we come to anything? The doctor replied that no matter how it was, this Yan Feng driver was their last hope, and told him to bring the driver in for surgery. Mai Quian stood up and reported that the driver had been fired. The chairman asked with surprise why the driver had been fired, and what kind of idiot could have done that. Surgeon Mai Quian replied that three days ago, the driver was caught peeking at a female doctor washing, and the chairman himself dismissed him. What? The chairman asked in surprise. Thinking back to when he fired the driver, he embarrassedly muttered, We're not all saints, are we? He then stood up and told Chu Yan to go to him and asked to go back because everything was at stake then. They just needed to cure Ye Lao. The chairman told Dr. Mai that she wouldn't be left out either and could get research funds. Since the operation had been interrupted, Ye Lao would last about five hours. There were already 3.5 hours left. We had to hurry. The events moved to the basketball court from where the shouts of the players could be heard. The opponent was in surprise that Yang Feng was ahead, since he was so far away. The whistle blew. The match was over. The Greens were victorious with a score of 143 to 22. The audience praised player number 7, Jan. Dr. Mai finally found Ian, to which he was surprised. The hero excitedly started to explain that he accidentally saw Dr. Mei washing herself, but she told him to shut up and follow her. The opponents were discussing what they should do now. Liu Mao has a new legionnaire. Do we have to give the place to him? But no matter how tough a legionnaire is, you can always find someone to break his legs. Then they'll have another match and take back what they've taken back. Yang Feng and Dr. Mai approached Dr. Mai's car. Yang Feng was smashing Dr. Mai's car and resenting the fact that he wasn't the one who messed up Ye Lao's surgery and now had to redo it. He was kicked out of the clinic first and now they want him to cover for them. Who would even do such a thing? No, objected Yan Feng. Dr. Mai shouted back that he shouldn't smash her car, and she wasn't the one who fired him. However, Dr. Mai told him that he himself knew that Ye Lao was on the verge of death. His life was very precious. She hoped he would help them. The clinic was willing to fulfill any of his conditions. Don't, Yang Feng objected. After all, the clinic could only offer him money and a position. He had helped him win one match and had already earned a few thousand. What did he need their money for? Dr. Mai asked, what did he want? Maybe he wanted her to do something. Yan Feng walked up to her and said, You? This can be conditioned. She replied that she would think about it and was surprised to clarify what he meant. No, no, don't even dream of it, screamed Dr. May. Yan Feng replied that he hadn't even said anything yet. He asked if she had thought of something dirty. What do you girls even have in mind? Thought Yan Feng at the time. Yan Feng said that he just wanted to inform that he didn't mind living in the building next to the pharmaceutical factory for six months. That's all. Dr. Mai indignantly asked how he knew she had an apartment there. Yang Feng said not to bother and just decide yes or no. Dr. Mai agreed, but he had to save Ye Lao. Meanwhile, the hospital was already wondering where Yang Feng and Dr. Mai were, because Ye Lao had a couple of hours left. What was left to do? Yang Feng was already on the spot. He wondered what the patient's relatives thought. But first, Ye Lao had to be saved. The rest was for later. Yang Feng asked the doctors, what was the patient's condition? The doctor replied that the chest had already been opened up, the condition started to deteriorate sharply, and they had to suture him immediately. Dr. Mei also added that after suturing, the heartbeat improved and they bought some more time. Alveolar ventilation had decreased since the start of anesthesia. At that moment, he was already in a critical condition. That's right, I guess we'll have to sweat it out, thought Yang Feng. In the operating room? 
Senior Ye had polyogranous failure, heart rate 35, heart failure severe, and all parameters were not in accordance with surgical requirements. Chief Nurse, Cardinal Needle, two milligrams intravenous, Yang Feng ordered. He also told Dr. May that he was ready to open the chest as soon as the pulse stabilized. Two milligrams? Is he out of his mind? One milligram is the limit. Forget it. The Dean listens to him anyway, thought Dr. May. 60 Dr. May, I'll leave it to you. Just follow the previous cut, said Yan Feng. Dr. May replied that she would open her chest twice, but then what would she do? If the heart problem is not solved, wasn't there an option to do surgery? Yang Feng said to let him deal with the heart problem and just do what he says. Dr. May asked for help in removing the bindings. Help me pin everything down, I want to separate the interosseous ligament, asked Dr. May. Heparin, push the tape into the central vein, blocked artery, asked Yan Feng. Well done, all done in 10 minutes, praised Yang Feng. The patient's pulse was dropping dramatically. The patient's heart stopped beating. Dr. May asked if a defibrillator was needed, but Yang Feng said to continue with the heart strengthening injection. Intracardiac injection, 2 mg diluted 10 times with sterile saline solution. There was no reaction. Yan Feng said to keep giving injections 3 mg. With the same concentration, he said to hit the right ventricle. What? asked Dr. May. Yan Feng said not to be afraid, and just do it. He was responsible for it. One of the doctors reported, There's a heartbeat in there. Heart rate is 40. He's good, impressive, thought Dr. May. Don't get excited yet, said Dr. May. Yan Feng asked her to come over and remove the lung tumor. It shouldn't be difficult for you, let me deal with the heart, he added. Let's do it together at the same time, said Dr. May. Suddenly, Yang Feng reported that Elder Ye's heart had stopped beating again. He told him to proceed with the operation, blade number 11. A picture of the heart, curved tubular forceps. He was going to cut out the heart. But Yang Feng objected Dr. May, but he told me to go ahead with the operation. Dr. May asked why the patient's blood was black, and it smelled very bad. Yang Feng replied that it was poison. It must have been injected by the enemy during the war. And then it became jelly-like and attached to the inner wall. It was believed that the heart had been corroded by corrosion, and this was the cause of the heart defect. How do you know it so well? inquired Dr. May. Yang Feng asked Chief Nurse Lin to come over and help him hold the blood vessel while he prepared a clean solution. She replied that she couldn't, but he countered that it was no big deal. The heart wouldn't spit out if it wasn't beating. It was simple. This toxin is not something that can be washed away with ordinary cleaning solution. I must use something special, thought Yang Feng. Yan Feng asked Dean to use the solution to clean the inner wall of his heart. The washed out toxins were collecting, and he wanted to remove them. Okay, I can finally help here, said Dean. Yan Feng said that he had to prepare for another matter, and trouble was about to start. Dean told Ian that he'd flushed the inside of the patient's heart, but the heartbeat hadn't returned. It had been three minutes. What's next? Dean asked. Dr. May said, It's no good, Yang Feng. The lung activity has stopped. The tissue is starting to bleed. The blood vessel is very hard. The patient's pupils were beginning to show absent-mindedness. So be it, I'm coming, said Jan. The heartbeat's back. That's amazing. What did you do? Wipe your sweat, said Dr. May. This, Dean said with surprise, is recorded in medical history as the butterfly dance resonance. Ian said he'd tell you about it later. Needed to get up and continue the operation. Ah, good, agreed Dr. May. Yesu Han, Ye's eldest granddaughter, a Shanghai policeman, burst into the clinic saying, Who is Yang Feng? Come out. Yesu Han shouted at Han Shui's head doctor. Are you crazy? Letting an ambulance driver perform surgery on my grandfather. Why didn't you stop him? It's all your fault. The doctor replied that it doesn't mean that they didn't stop him. The doctor also added that it was the dean who protected him. It was the dean who wanted Jan to have the surgery. Dean or Jin Kang, Yesu Han clarified. Dean Lee always acted calm. Why did he let this happen, she asked. The doctor replied that it was because he didn't know what had happened. The doctor tried to confront him, but he still insisted that Yang Feng perform the surgery. It's not clear what kind of relationship he had with Yang Feng. Elder Ye could live for another five hours, but now the doctor was afraid that Yesu Han asked where Dean Li and Yang Feng were now. The doctor replied that they were in the operating room, a room on the fifth floor. He also said that he would see her off. Yesu Han entered the operating room with the words, Who is Yang Feng here? Come out now. If you dare to touch my grandfather, I won't let you live. The doctor started to drive Yesu Han away with the words, Hey, miss, we're doing an emergency surgery right now. You can't go in but told them to shut up and continued to demand Yang Feng. 
It's me, Vi, revealed Yang, tossing a syringe at Yesuhan. The guards entered the operating room, addressing Jan. Malloy, how dare you attack the police? Do you know what you've done? Yang replied that he was saving Elder Ye, and she just fainted. Are you going to keep talking about me attacking the police, or do you want me to save Elder Ye? Yang Feng asked. Security came out of the operating room, and the doctor was wondering why they came out and stopped the surgery. Dr. May asked if Dr. Yang was okay. He didn't look well. Jan replied that he was fine, and asked how much longer. Dr. May replied that the main part of the tumor had been cut off, now she was working on the area of spread. Dr. May asked if Dr. Yang could still continue. He replied that he needed to hurry up. After the butterfly resonated, Jan's hand could no longer move. He didn't want to use it again. Dr. May said everything was fine and he could stop. The doctors came out of the operating room, and Dr. Han Shiwei started to ask, Oh, what's going on here? The doctor fainted, was he so embarrassed to come out of there? To which the doctors replied that the surgery was successful, and Dr. Yang was tired. Successful? How is that possible? Can anyone succeed in this type of surgery? The nurse replied that it was true. Dr. May and Dean were already suturing. Impossible, Han Shui thought to himself. Dr. May had never heard of butterfly resonance. It was like a martial arts novel. It seemed to her that Dean knew something. Dr. May wanted to ask Ian, and it was good if he would teach her. He was usually annoying though. Still, saving a man's life that's serious. May walked in with a question. Yang Feng, are you feeling better? Um, if I told you it was a computer virus, would you believe it? Said to ask Ian. Do I believe it or not? Just look at me. She asked why he put it so loud and what the other co-workers would think of her now. She said to speak up and in addition asked why he was in her blanket. It was his favorite. Number 66 or 6. There was indeed a virus on the computer. It was not turned off. Dr. May, it really is a virus. You have to believe me said Ian. Ugh. How could I believe you? said May. Why is it abnormal that I'm doing this? Why did you lie that you have a virus? Even if it is a virus, it must be because you lied to watch some questionable video, she added. No, I'm looking at the biology website. Suddenly this thing just opened up, I couldn't close it. You don't believe me, then go look at it, said Ian. May told him to move. How would it look from the outside if he pinned her to the ground? You bastard, May said to him. Ha scumbags like you watching biology? What nonsense, said May. Ian asked to forget and not talk about it. May asked why he was secretly using her blanket. It was her favorite blanket. Ian said he couldn't help it. When he woke up in her office, the air conditioning was making him cold and he couldn't find the remote. He searched her closet to find something he could take cover with. Oh, okay, but only you used my private thing. Also messed up with another cabinet. That's great. May said. Suddenly, May yelled for him to take off the blanket and return it to her. Huh. Stingy, Ian said. And he also said he wouldn't return it and would sue if he took it off. You bastard! Give me back the blanket! yelled May. Hehehe, <laughs> upset! asked Ian. What are you doing? asked May indignantly. Ian apologized. There was a knock on the door and a Dr. Yang, are you inside? was heard. It was Yesu Han. She had just heard about her grandfather's condition. She regretted what happened before and wanted to apologize to Yang. Hey, cruel girl, you've seen enough? Who? Who is looking at you? Asked Yesuhan. Yang replied that her face was already red and asked if she could leave and if she hadn't looked at it yet. She replied that she knew and would leave now. Don't show up in front of me again, you bastard! She shouted, shutting the doors. May asked Ian what he was looking at like that and when he planned to leave her office. Jan asked not to call her that and said that besides, he was waiting for the key to his room, which she had promised him. May said she had already completely forgotten. Right there, bastard, said May. Thanks, bitch, replied Ian. May said, wait, asshole, and asked if Ian would teach her the butterfly resonance dance. She asked to be taught, and then she said she wouldn't call him a scumbag. Ian replied that he didn't want to, and she could keep doing it. He didn't care. It was an ancient secret. Don't you know what ethics is? Scumbag, yelled May. Yang met Yesu Han and asked if she was waiting for him there. Yesu Han replied that no way and she wasn't that bored. She said that her grandfather was looking for Yang. Yang and Yesu Han entered Elder Yi's chamber. Yesu Han asked how he was feeling and said that she had invited Yang Feng. Ah, Dr. Yang, the patient said, and apologized for not being able to stand up and thank Yang. Ah, no, 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 Yan said, and asked Ye Lao to rest well. He also added that saving lives was the duty of doctors. Ye Lao said that Yang was too humble. Ye Lao had so many different medical masters, and Yang was really the best. Yan asked if Ye Lao could tell how he went toxins. Toxins? Clarified Ye Suhan. 
Ye Lao called out to Su Chang. Ye Lao said he wanted to eat her pork and red date soup, then asked if she would make it for Grandpa. Pork? shouted Ye Su Han and added that she wouldn't make anything from a pig. Okay, okay, I know, Ye Su Han said, and asked Yang to take care of her grandfather. Ye Lao said that since Yang had already saved his life, it was right for him to tell Yang about it. However, he added that Yang must have realized that knowing about it would not do him any good, yet he clarified whether Yang still wanted to know. Yang said that it was fine and Ye Lao could say whatever he wanted. Eh, Ye Lao said, then began his story of 40 years ago, was a group of foreign mercenaries called the Black Tiger Mercenaries, who had crossed the border illegally and had been imprisoned for a long time. But they suspected them of a larger conspiracy and quickly dispatched a task force of 300 people to try and drive them out by force. This task force was one of the best teams in the country at the time, and Ye Lao was then a major general. And the nightmare then happened almost instantly. Afterward, there was only 20 minutes of fighting. We were destroyed by one person. Ye Lao added and continued. Ye Lao was the only survivor and was injected with an unknown drug. He had to live on the streets to get his information back. 40 years, he studied mercenaries, hoping to one day avenge the deaths of his fallen comrades for 40 years. And nothing. 40 years, he suffered the effects of the drug every night. 40 years, he lived and died every day, mentally and physically. Fortunately, he had met Dr. Yang, so he could be a normal person for a few more days. Yan replied that it was all hard for Ye Lao. He also asked if Ye Lao had told his family about it all. Ye Lao laughed and said that he would just carry it himself. He asked, why should I bother my family with this? After which he asked Yang to keep his secret. Ye Lao clarified, does Yang know something about the drug? Ian replied that the drug was called deoxynucleotide serum, or serum for short. This serum was being researched by major medical institutions around the world at that time, and was mainly used to curb drug addiction and mental illness, but let alone the public, the military might not even know about it. And the Dragon Drugs Group owned by Ping An Hospital was also working on it. I've heard rumors about it, Yellow. Now that it's over, you just get better, and don't think about finding them again, said Yan, because they're long gone, Ian added in thought. Dr. Mack, I heard you cured Mr. Ye, please say something, the reporters shouted to Dr. May. The chairman asked the journalists to take their time and said he would explain the details later. He also asked, now if you'll excuse us, Dr. Maku needs to go home and rest. She is exhausted. Xiu Yan, I didn't want to do this either. It's true that the loan belongs to Yang Feng, but he doesn't have a license to practice medicine, the chairman said to Dr. May. He also added that if Ian was kicked out, not only would it not benefit the hospital, but he would also cause problems for himself. You know how strong the public is. We'll have to wait and explain to Yang Feng later, but we can't contact him now, the chairman agreed. Guys would walk down the street and say, hey bro Huang Mao, you're really something. Someone like you can handle anything. Suddenly, one of the guys called out to the other guy, and the latter asked in surprise what was wrong. A guy said that, he saw Yang Feng's girl outside and added that Brother Wu loved that girl. One of the guys said that they had just come to return her to Brother Wu. The guys thought why don't he and Brother Wu start dating again. They already had an idea, but they couldn't do it the wrong way, there was a lot of security so. One of the guys jumped into the road in front of Dr. May's car and started screaming that he had been hit to death and was in pain. It looks so fake, shouted May. Another guy ran out into the road and started feeling sorry for the man lying on the road saying, What's wrong with you, my dear brother? Get up, open your eyes and look at your poor brother. The guy continued to fake pity the lying man and said, You just got into Huazia University. How jealous everyone is of the talent. I just saved up money for school. Dr. May wondered who would believe that. Everyone around them started feeling sorry for the brothers on the road. One of the brothers told May that she was a murderer and would not be able to escape. He also added that he would take her to the police. The guys grabbed May and she screamed, Help! Kidnapping! May kept asking for help and claiming she didn't kill anyone and it was them. They were the bad guys. Seeing Yan, May shouted, Yan Feng, help me! One of the guys asked in surprise, Yang Feng? The guys screamed that they were just like doing justice and told Jan not to try to stop them. They told Ian it was his girlfriend's fault. May yelled for Yang not to listen to the guys and she wouldn't run anyone over. She also yelled for him to call the police. Ian clarified when she became his girlfriend, to which she yelled that it wasn't about that. Well, if it's my girlfriend, we can't just sit and watch, so, Ian said. He pointed at the guy who was holding May and told him to let his girlfriend go, calling him a banana flat-headed gorilla. He also offered to wait for the police. 
Yang Feng approached the brothers on the road and said that he had heard that there had been a fatal accident and clarified whether it was true. Yan Feng slapped the guy's palm and the guy came to life. People around me started to say with surprise, didn't a tragedy happen here? What? This man is alive and well. They realized it was a vile sham and it was the kidnappers. People wanted to call the police. Damn. Well done, Yang Feng. How many times do I have to go through this? Don't blame me if you put me under the gun, thought the kidnapper. Yang Feng said to one of the brothers, Oh, you dead man. Don't move. We'll take your body to the crematorium in a while. The kidnapper chased after Yang Feng, shouting that he had put up with him for a long time. Mei shouted to Yang Feng to be careful. The kidnapper swung a knife at Yang Feng. Yang Feng repelled the blow and said, Carrying a knife with you, you're not much of a law-abiding citizen, said Yang Feng to the kidnapper. The kidnapper thought he couldn't break Yang's arm. He was strong. Yang Feng told him to get out of there. The two brothers ran up to the injured kidnapper asking how he was. The kidnapper said to them, You're blind, can't you see? To which one of the brothers asked why he was mad and said to beat up Jan. People around here started saying, Wow, isn't that Zhang Wu? What's he doing here? He was in charge of that whole bar street. Zhang Wu said that it was no big deal to beat up his brother. They dared to cross into his territory. He ordered to destroy Yang Feng. Yang Feng, get back, shouted Mei. Zhang Wu asked Yang Feng, You're a tough guy, aren't you? Zhang Wu said that it was over quickly and told him to make sure that Yang Feng was broken. But Yan Feng told him to shut his mouth. Yang Feng asked if he was causing trouble and added that Zhang Wu didn't seem like a smart person. Yang Feng asked if he wanted to be a gangster and added that he was still too young. The guys came running up to ask, Brother Wu, how are you, Wu? Yang Feng scared Zhang Wu. He thought he was going to be kicked, but he was still standing, so he was fine. Brother Wu, you're a real man, said one of the brothers. Don't touch me, said Zhang Wu to Yang Feng. It leaked. What? Because of the kick in the bladder? Asked Zhang Wu. Yan Feng said that it wasn't the end. He told him to go back to his place and wait for him. He said that they would see each other later. If he didn't like it, he could go and call more people. One of the brothers asked Zhang Wu about Yang being too good and what they should do with him. Zhang Wu told Yang Feng to come first, and they would see what he was up to. Hello, beautiful. I'm Yang Feng. Yang said to Dr. Mei, she replied. You're crazy. I know you're Yang Feng. He said that wasn't true, and it was time for them to get reacquainted. After all, things were different between them then. Mei told him not to talk to himself, and added that she didn't admit to anything. She said she almost forgot that she had something important to tell him. She couldn't reach him earlier. She asked if he had seen the news. She said she really wasn't trying to take away his position at work, and it was the hospital's decision. If he claimed to have cured Ye Lao, it would not benefit the hospital or him, because he wasn't certified to practice medicine. She had thought about it a lot too, but they still hadn't found a suitable solution then. May said that if he wanted something in return, he could mention it to the hospital. May said that the hospital would do anything to keep Yang happy. She also asked not to hate their hospital. Ian wondered why it was so perfect. He added that he didn't care about the reporters. What's more, Ian asked if May wanted to consider giving him the rest of her life. He added that he would be responsible for her. May asked if he wanted a confession and said that there was no way she would give the rest of her life to a random person like him. Ian replied that he didn't mind. He said that if the old plan didn't work, the new one would. Zheng Wu asked who the hell told him to be so curious. He asked if he was talking about paying for it. He asked, Still intrigued? You think you're Zhu Lian? Oh shit, it's leaking again, that bastard Yang Feng. Zheng Wu thought, and told one of the guys to buy him another pair of pants, then told him to forget it and just buy him diapers. Zhang Wu was informed that Yang Feng was already there. He replied that it was just in time and everything was ready. At the entrance, everyone was preparing for Yang Feng's arrival with the words, First knock this guy out, then tie him up. Let's see how well he can fight. Yang Feng flew into the door with the words, You have the nerve to do this. How dare you? What the hell? He how would he know? Thought Zhang Wu. Zhang Wu asked Yang Feng not to kill him, saying that such a thing would never happen again and he would serve him. He again said that such a thing would never happen again. Yes, 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 said Yang Feng. Half a million. I'll charge you $500,000 to repair the car, and also for emotional distress, my services, etc. Understand? Said Yang Feng. He also added that he wanted his money after three days. What, Yang, you're a triad, right? Zhang Wu asked. 
Zhang Wu said that he couldn't scrape up that much money. Most of the money he earned was given to his boss, Ouyang Jin. The rest would barely be enough to feed his brothers. He really couldn't scrape up that much money. Ouyang Jin, Shizukai's top manager? Yang Feng clarified. Zhang Wu agreed and said that he knew his boss. If he didn't pay him enough, he would make him suffer. And if he found out, Yang would be in trouble too. Yang replied that it was none of his business. Leaving Yang Feng reminded him that Zhang Wu had to pay him in three days. Only then would Yang cure his incontinence. But if he didn't have the money, he would have to wear a diaper for the rest of his life. According to Yang, it was perfect for scum like him. Ian thought about how he had always wanted to wear a lab coat. Even though the pay was low, it was still a decent job. And maybe he would get a chance to meet more people at Dragon Pharma. Entering Ye Lao's room, Yang said, Ye Lao, I came to examine you. How are you recovering? Dr. Yang, good morning, the intern said. He was surprised that Dr. Young was so young. Thank you, Dr. Yang, said the intern. Yang asked if Ye Lao felt any discomfort. Ye Lao replied that he was fine and called out to Yang. Ye Lao said that he was lucky that Yang Feng saved his life. He couldn't pay him anything. He reached out and asked him to take it. Ye Lao said it was nothing valuable, but asked him to keep it safe. Ye Lao said that it might come in handy for Yang in the future if he was ever in a tight spot. Ten years as a mercenary told him that Ian was a man who could use him. Grandpa, why did you give the gold medal to that doctor? Why couldn't you give him money as a thank you gift? We are your grandchildren. Ye Lao's grandchildren shouted. Ye Lao asked why don't they go back home? Wow Dr. Mei, oh no love, said Yang Feng to Dr. Mei. Dr. Mei asked, can we not remember what happened last night? Ian replied that they had agreed and let it pass. He would start over. Dr. Mei said to be a little more serious. Yang Feng agreed. Dr. Mei informed Yang Feng that she was having a reunion in the evening. Everyone hadn't seen each other for so long, she added that she was scared to go there alone, but she couldn't refuse, so she asked if Yang could keep her company. Yang Feng said that he had seen their reunions, and to say that it was a big party was a huge exaggeration. He also added that everyone there was up to no good, fighting by any means necessary. It was so boring, he said he wouldn't go, of course. It's clear to you, thought Dr. Mei. Suddenly, Dr. Mei said, I knew you men were unreliable. I'm a beautiful and lonely girl, fine. I'll go on my own, alone. My car is broken, I'll take a cab. Whose driver will be a man with a dark agenda who will probably rob me halfway there? Maybe some of my classmates have changed for the worse. Who knows? Yan Feng said that apparently he had no choice and asked Dr. Mei not to ramble. Brother Wu, bear with us, we'll take you to a doctor. Let's find you more experts, doctors who will definitely cure you, said the guy to Zhang Wu. But then Yang Feng appeared and asked Zhang Wu to lend him his car for a couple days. To give a girl a ride naturally needs a car, thought Yan Feng. Meanwhile, Mei was wondering why Yang Feng still hadn't arrived. If she had known in advance, she would have dressed warmer. She wondered why so many people were staring at her. What a shame. And if that nasty Yang Feng was trying to set her up. But then Yang Feng suddenly rides up to her, scaring her very much. Mei asked where Yang Feng got the car. He said she thought he stole it or took it from someone. Mei said that they were meeting at an expensive hotel that time. And if he had gone like that, he would have been laughed at. She also added that the initiator of the meeting was called Lin Hao, a rich kid whose parents ran the famous Zhang Hai company. Almost everyone present was either a sycophant or wanted to make friends. He called her so she had to come. She said he should have worn a pantsuit. Yan Feng wondered if she was worried about it, if he should have gone with her in the first place. He didn't care who they were. Wow reunion, is it really? Yang Feng asked. Yang Feng said that no matter how you looked at it, his clothes were different from what everyone else wore. Mei replied that she was telling him and he wasn't listening to her at all. Mei was greeted with the words, You came after all. I've been waiting for you. Come, come quickly, beautiful Kuan. Brother Hao is afraid you won't get a seat and asked me to wait for you here. Oh Chu Yang, you're getting prettier day by day. Mei thanked and said that Du Kun was overdoing it. She said, This is my friend Yang Feng, he's accompanying me. Du Sun asked if she was serious about taking a friend to the reunion and if she thought it was too much. He asked if it was unfolding. He said that Brother Hao would not be happy. Mei asked if he realized that it was too impolite to talk like that. We're leaving, Yang Feng, said Mei. Bastard. She's still as stubborn as she was when she was in university, Du Kun thought. The girls would say, Brother Hao, it's been two years. You're still living large. Gathering everyone and spending more than a hundred thousand is so wasteful, Hao replied. It's nothing. 
Let these little people have fun. They asked. Just a few hundred thousand? That's nothing to our how, right? Ding, ding, ding. Guys, look who's here, said Du Kun. May greeted everyone and said that they hadn't seen each other for a long time. People around were saying that Chu Yang was getting more beautiful day by day. May said she shouldn't, and everyone was so beautiful compared to her. The people around them said that she was the smartest and most beautiful girl in the group, and they were so envious of her. Who's that jerk in the background? Is it Chu Yang's boyfriend? Thought Hao. Hao called Chu Yan the beauty of their group and said that they really hadn't seen each other for a long time. Chu Yan said that meant it was only because of Lin Hao's generosity that everyone was gathered there. Lin Hao asked if she had brought her boyfriend, and offered to meet him soon. Kuan said no, then explained that his name was Yang Feng and he was her colleague. She said that her car broke down and Yang was very lucky to give her a ride there. She also added that it was a bit inconsiderate, but she hoped no one would mind. The people around started talking to each other. Huh? It turns out they're working together, and I thought Kuan's boyfriend would be better. Of course she's picky. But she ended up choosing from what was left, ha ha ha. Just some doctor. All the clothes he's wearing now aren't more than 200 yuan, are they? Thought Lin Hao. Well, well, well. Everyone has finally gotten together. It's rare that we all get together, said Lin Hao. Lin Hao offered to raise their glasses and added that they all as one would not have left sober that day. Lin Hao approached Chu Yan and asked if she knew that he had loved her since university and added that he was sorry because he had been a complete fool. He said that he often behaved like an immature young man, but he suggested that they forget the affairs of the past and become friends again. He said it wasn't that significant, after which suggested they have a drink and announce the establishment of their relationship. Qiu Yan replied that judging by his words, she was some petty person. Everything was already long past. Then told him to go chat with someone and added that he shouldn't have drunk so much. Ouch! What a fool I am! making demagoguery and pissing off the beauty of the course," Lin Hao said with a laugh. He also said that he didn't understand why she had disliked him from the beginning of their interactions at the university. Pointing at Yan Feng, he asked why she got close to this particular loser and asked why she didn't open up to him. The former classmates were saying, Oi yo Lin Hao is angry, I think this loser is finished. Chu Yan is also an idiot even when we went to university. She even dared to provoke Lin Hao. She brought some left-handed person. It's clear as day that Lin Hao is worried about her. Lin Hao asked Yang Feng what he didn't understand. All it meant was, Lin Hao shouted to Yan Feng, What did that mean about him being a much worse loser? The people around them were saying, I'll go. This guy is a beast. He has the nerve to say such things to Lin Hao. They were laughing as they watched and called it an interesting show. Someone asked them to stop. One of the classmates thought about the last time someone who dared to say such a thing to Lin Hao back then was in a grave two meters deep, and so he didn't even know whether he was ignorant or just a fool. There was no road to heaven for him, and the gates of hell had already been passed through. Lin Hao told Yang Feng to be ashamed, and he wouldn't ask him to leave this place for Kuan's sake, so he could have fun. Yang Feng replied, Wow. Then Lin Hao added that Yang Feng should have realized one thing. Lin Hao said that Yang Feng was only whole as long as he was under his girlfriend's skirt. Yang Feng said that he had no intention of scratching his tongue with Lin Hao, and his ability to quip was not inferior to Lin Hao's. 268. Yang Feng said that Lin Hao couldn't even get grapes and said they were sour. Yang Feng added that if the latter thought he was so rich, Qiu Yan should have belonged to him, but after all, he himself realized that this was not the case. The waitress shouted to one of the classmates, Guest, you're out of line. That's just shameless. The waitress also added, We're not in a place where you can do whatever you want. Lin Hao punched M shouted at the waitress, What are you yapping about? Are you trying to make me angry? Lin Hao said that would be the case with anyone else who still dared to say that it was a place where everyone couldn't do what they wanted. He asked who would dare, and said that if anyone rattled anything, he would level that hotel to the ground. Lin Hao shouted that his father was the chairman of Zhonghai Company's labor union, and if it wasn't for him and Lin Hao, would they have been able to visit that damn hotel? Lin Hao told the waitress to leave and bring his boss to him to apologize. Lin Hao asked, How dare the waitress treat his friend so rudely? Hey, don't you want to look at me? Lin Hao offered to have a drink and also entertain the party host with dancing. The classmate replied, Oh, brother Hao is so cool. Not good. Yang Feng and Chu Yan thought. A classmate said, 
Brother Hao, you are so powerful. Saving your good friend from evil and slander. Lin Hao would reply that it was nothing, and some ignorant and uneducated people needed to be shown where Outplace was. The classmate replied, Beautiful words, Brother Hao. Lin Hao offered him a drink to his friend. It seems like it's time to go home, Chu Yang and Yang Feng thought. The boss told the waitress what an injustice this was. For starters, he told her to go to the finance department to get her medical expenses paid. He told her to rest at home for a few days, and added that she didn't have to go to work yet. Everything else he said to leave it up to him. She was one of his best employees. Their piggishness made him very angry. He said he would have done justice for her. The waitress thanked the boss. The boss apologized for disturbing Mrs. Bai, and asked if she could run over there once. Lin Hao at that time shouted, I won! And the classmates shouted back, Brother Hao, I'm the best. Yang Feng suggested that Ko Yan take off quietly, and asked her what she thought about it. Ko Yan agreed. The hotel manager Mrs. Bai asked, Where are you two going, dear guests? She added that she needed them for some important business. She also said that she would disturb them a bit, and asked if they could stay for a while. Mrs. Bai apologized for disturbing the other guests, and introduced herself as the manager of the hotel. She said that those who wanted to meet their boss could go with her. Lin Hao asked, don't you understand what you're being told? You bloody dare to summon us to your boss just now? Shit! Some pathetic manager is thinking of fooling us? Do you think Brother Hao would stoop to such a thing? One of his classmates shouted. That's right! Call your boss! You dare to deceive Brother Hao! Shouted the other classmates. Call the boss! Get the boss! Get the boss! Do a strip tease! The classmates kept shouting. Mrs. Bai told the guards to take them all. Hey, you think you can beat us? You two stinking mutts! Don't you know who Mr. Hao's father is? One of the classmates shouted back at them. Don't blame me for not warning you. His father is the chairman of the Zhonghai Company's labor union. Shut up! A classmate shouted again. The guard asked everyone to follow him, and asked him not to make him drag each of them one by one. 296. Shit! Wait a minute, I'll definitely make you regret this, said Lin Hao, then told the people not to falter, and informed them that he would go with those mutts to their boss. Please guests, our boss is in Tianjia's room, said Mrs. Bai. Where's the fucking boss? Show yourself, shouted Lin Hao. Are you the boss here? Do you know about Union Chairman Lin Bao? He's my father. Believe it or not, I'll level your hotel tomorrow. Do you really think you can reopen your crappy hotel? If it wasn't for mine, shouted Lin Hao. The boss asked Lin Hao why he was so nervous. He replied that of course he knew Lin Bao. However, he asked if Lin Hao knew who he was. He introduced himself and said that he was merely Ouyang Jin, a prominent figure in Zhonghai. There was no one who didn't know him. He added that he was also the owner of that inn. He asked about the fact that perhaps he too needed to ask his father to show him respect. What? Mr. Ouyang, thought Lin Hao. 